This video is part of a project for the Element 14 community, the electronics and engineering community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com, link in the doobly doo. Okay, so open up the stereo monitor and here we go. In a previous video, we looked at how to build a basic Arduino based clock. Uh, there was just one problem with it. Uh, every time you disconnected mains power, it would, well, reset. So we need to correct for that by installing a battery backed up real time clock. Greetings programs, Atari here, you there, and if you enjoy sweating your butt off in a hot shop in the summertime to make goofy Arduino projects, then go ahead and click the subscribe button, blah, 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 and for now, tally ho. Okay. This is the heart of our RTC module. This is a DS1307 plus uh, real-time clock, which is essentially just an eight pin dip package IC uh, with a little bit of RAM in it, and it connects to an oscillator, and that provides essentially a perpetual clock calendar system as long as it's got power, which is really cool because it has really, really, really low power consumption. And uh, like a 2032 coin cell can run this thing for like 10 years. So no problems there. It's a good solid battery backup solution for a clock. So let's take a quick look at how we would wire this into our circuit. Okay, as you see, it's a pretty simple wiring job. We have X1 and X2. It's our connections for our crystal oscillator. So we're gonna have our 32.768 kilohertz crystal connected there that will bypass the internal oscillator and give us the timing that we're looking for. Right here is the voltage input for our backup battery, a coin cell, probably a 2032. Uh, and then of course, right here connects to ground. All of that, the ground line will be just be common with the ground on the Arduino as well. So don't have to worry about that too much. Up here, we've got our five volts in from the Arduino. This pin uh, outputs a square wave, and um, I could use that, but it sort of defeats the purpose. I would rather actually have the actual time once it's set uh, and constantly pushing the actual current time. So I'm going to skip the square wave timing, and I'm going to connect the, uh, the data line here. And this is a, a two-way data line going to connect it to uh, the Arduino on analog four and then our uh, clock input from the Arduino on analog five. And we'll have that and that will create our little real time clock module. Now these actually have to have uh, pull uppers. I didn't draw them in. Um, these need pull up resistors. So I need to throw a couple of 10K pull up resistors there and we will be good to go. So let's get this wired together. Okay, parts roll call. Here we go. We've got our base clock unit here. Uh, the DS1307, got a coin cell holder, our oscillator crystal, some 10K resistors, a selection of jumper wires, and of course, our lappy for programming. So let's put this thing together. Fancy. All right, now let's take a look at the code. Okay, so to work with the DS1307 and the Arduino, I'm going to use the real-time clock DS1307 library by David Brown. Um, I'll, I'll put this in the show notes as well. So what this is going to allow us to do is communicate with the chip via the wire library, which uh, handles the I2C communication for Arduino. It's like the default library for I2C on Arduino. So we can talk back and forth. That'll allow us to get information from the chip, store information to the chip, uh, and manipulate that information as necessary. So what this is going to do is going to define a bunch of different registers within the RAM on the little chip for minutes, seconds, hours, day of the week, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and allow us to write to those registers and to read from them. And then it's going to afford us a handful of new functions like setting the time and collecting the time and formatting it correctly and starting the clock, stopping the clock, square wave manipulation, all that kind of fun stuff. Not really going to mess with a lot of that, but we will in the um, demo code. Speaking of, uh, just going to run the demo code real 
quick on here, just to just for proof of concept, just to get the thing going. So here we have the uh, real-time clock demo. So I'm skipping over a lot of the um, the setup here because I've covered it in other videos, and you can check that out in the link up in the corner. So what we're going to do is activate the serial interface. So we're going to be looking at it through the serial monitor, uh, and then that is going to read the real-time clock time. Um, and then it will print it in a particular format, like the you know hour, minute, second format. It's also going to allow a series of commands uh, for like starting the clock, stopping the clock, uh, setting the time, uh, things like that. And that's all handled through this uh, process command function. So that's all of this right through here. Um, this is all process command. Um, and that's just going to listen for a particular command from the serial monitor and then uh, execute that command based on um, whatever's going on. That's really it. Like, there's not much going on. We're just reading the time, printing it out on the serial monitor, and listening for uh, commands. So let's get this uploaded and uh, take a look. Okay, so open up the serial monitor and here we go. We've got a uh, just a running tally of the time, essentially. Um, I could probably clean this up and put like, you know, a delay in there so it's only showing once a second instead of like 20 times, I don't know. I can't count it that fast. Anyway, uh, but it is there and it's, uh, it's working. Uh, so we've got a running time and check this out, check this out, this is the coolest part. So I can take that off. We ended at 43.54 and we're gonna give it like, maybe like another 10 seconds. Um, so we reopen the serial monitor, reconnect, and we're still going 44 and change now. Uh, so like 10 seconds have passed and it's 10 seconds later. So it is working and the battery backup works as well. So don't have to worry so much about having to reset the clock every single time I turn it off. So there we go. That is ready to go. Next thing I'm going to do is transition from uh, the LCD here over to the like 14 segment starburst displays and I'll be doing that in a future video so be sure and subscribe and stay tuned for that in the meantime you've got uh, social media up over here here's a video that YouTube thinks you will probably enjoy uh, if you want to watch the rest of this project the whole playlist is right around here and the show notes for this episode are somewhere right around here my name is Atari and until next time remember it's okay it's just a prototype Tally ho, y'all.